All right. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome once again to the Youth Ministry course. I uh, hope you all are doing well. Um, so in the last class, we uh, discussed the organizational aspect of the youth ministry, uh, everything that goes into planning from the team, the way it's uh, set up. Um, so that was chapter four, the organizational aspect of it. And I hope you've been able to follow, understand, and uh, learn everything about youth ministry so far. Um, so in today's session, uh, we'll move to chapter five. I will discuss a little bit about uh, the challenges in uh, youth ministry, right? Uh, some of the challenges that we face in youth uh, ministry. Um, and yeah, I mean, this can be applicable for other areas of ministry as well, but then in our context um, related to youth ministry, okay? Um, right, so uh, first off, we, the, I, I wanted to kind of approach the challenges from two dis different aspects. Uh, a challenges that a leader or a pastor uh, f goes through, faces, and then a challenges of our audience. Okay, so we we'll look at, uh, at, at those um, two different things. Um, so the first thing I want to discuss is the challenges of a youth leader or a minister in youth ministry. Uh, one of the major challenges is um, impatience, uh, impatience amongst uh, young leaders, uh, young say young worship pastors or young youth leaders and whatnot, is uh, impatience. Okay, uh, so that is we wanted results yesterday. Okay, um, this is like a typical uh, feature of a young leader is who normally aspire change and new way of doing things. So I've just been appointed as a youth leader or a youth pastor, and I'm going to change everything uh, in one day. Um, you know, so, and that, that that sense of impatience, okay, it's like, okay, want to bring about change, I want to do it right away, and uh, let's go. Uh, okay, but unfortunately, uh, practically speaking, uh, that does not happen uh, like that okay uh, and so we need to approach uh, this area of ministry youth ministry as a marathon instead of a uh, hundred meters dash okay because uh, guys we are living in a day and age where uh, we expect microwave results right um, I think I hope you get what I'm saying um, you know put cold water inside for 30 seconds and get you know, hot water. Uh, and it seems like uh, is, it, we, we all do this. We still do this. And we put the water, put it in the pot, and then boil it and wait for five minutes. And it seems like uh, it's, uh, it's not trendy. <laughs> uh, but I hope you get what I'm saying, right? Is we all want immediate microwave results, um, right? learn to play the guitar in five day uh, five days learn to play learn to sing in in one day i mean i'm sure we can but i learned to play the guitar in five days i, I, I see i mean i see posters like that i'm like yeah we, we just spent half our life learning the instrument uh, and uh so it, it's 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 the way of attracting people saying okay you know it's, it's it can be done in just uh, short period of time and uh, somewhere somehow uh, the same mentality can creep in to our area of ministry as leaders as well if we are not careful okay um, and so the example that I just simply want to share is um, the difference between a marathon runner and a hundred meter sprint dash runner Okay, and this example was birthed out of my personal experience. Uh, so in school and in college, uh, when I was in part of the athletics and whatnot, I was a, a hundred meters dash runner. You know, I could uh, like a hundred meters or two hundred meters. Uh, you know, it's just short distance and short sprint. You can you know run. So I was I would train for that, and um, I would participate in a hundred meters dash and whatnot. And then one day, uh, what happened, uh, you know, there was, you know, there's a lot of uh, marathons that happens in the city, at least in the city of Bangalore, um, you know, like a 
five kilometer or 10 kilometer run or 30 kilometers run or whatever and so the they opened up you know for us to participate in it and so i also signed up to it say like, okay i'm going to run because i'm a runner too i'm an athlete too i'm going to participate in marathon this marathon. uh yeah i lasted about five or ten minutes i think um so it's exactly you know how it sounds like i ran for 200 meters then i ran out of breath uh, and uh and then yeah kind of just walk the uh, rest of the marathon <laughs> uh so the difference here is uh there is a difference between an athlete that trains for a hundred meter sprint and is a difference between an athlete how he trains he or she trains for a marathon they train very differently for a hundred meters dash you don't need to train on your mentality you know as much your mental strength but as a marathon runner you work not only on your physical strength but also on your mental strength it's like how and your endurance test your perseverance everything gets tested right your character is tested your integrity is tested your your patience your endurance your perseverance everything is tested as a marathon um runner and so um and it's very interesting that hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 you know uses this phrase this choice of words saying and let us run with endurance the race that god has set before us the you know christian life is a one big marathon and we uh, have to run this race with perseverance and faithfulness and whatnot but more so uh, when it comes to leading an area of ministry uh, it is very easy uh, for us to get impatient and expect results like a microwave results and things to change overnight uh, unfortunately that, that does not happen so I want us you know I want to encourage us all to keep this point in mind that um, approach it as a marathon you know take it one day at a time okay uh, I hope you all are with me right um, and we see that it's it's I mean it's very biblical as well. It's not just a practical idea. You see that God did not give the promised land to the Israelites in one day, right? Uh, it was a gradual conquest. It's, you know, little by little, little by little, right? Uh, so he put together a journey that would allow them to develop their faith and confidence, right? As they learned to depend on him. Okay. Um, so, this is important because uh, the simple foundation of uh, the ministry is strengthened in your de um, as you develop faith, as you develop skills, as you develop leadership, uh, experience, character, discipline, passion, patience, and endurance. Right? All of this will be tested um, as a, as you run uh, as you lead this area of ministry as a big marathon. Wait, am I making sense? Uh, yeah, this, you get what I'm say saying. Okay. All right, awesome. Cool. That's one of the challenges uh, in young leaders or in you know, leaders of any age is that we expect results immediately, but to approach uh, this area of ministry as a marathon um, and just don't let impatience uh, you know make you quit prematurely okay uh, this is one of the reasons as well not the only reason but this is one of the reasons when we you know you get discouraged when you so don't see results when you don't see things going your way immediately you tend to get discouraged and then you tend to quit uh, or give up very prematurely okay we'll talk about uh, more in, in, in more points to come um, and the second challenge in uh, the area of ministry is time management. Okay, time management. Um, so, if you don't manage your time, your your time will be managed for you. I'll say that again. Okay. If you don't manage your time as you're leading a ministry, your time will be managed for you okay um so you know the 
the many demands of youth ministry will keep you busy um, because unlike any other work or profession uh, your ministry work does not end after 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. Uh, you can get a call or a message any time of the day or night and so you, work never really finishes on our clock right uh, did, what, did I hear a name in? <laughs> uh, work never really finishes or ends uh, when it comes to ministry there is always going to be work you will always be thinking about something related to work and um, that is the nature of ministry uh, you're working for you know uh, so to manage well to do this you need a healthy understanding uh, of your priorities uh, based on the church's values and expectations uh, and whatnot right so to be able to manage your time uh, without burning out um, is you need to understand your priorities really well right you need to make a note of your priorities really well so um, and one uh, reality uh, you'll quickly learn is that uh, you know like as mentioned work never ends uh, more is always waiting to be done um, and so the secret to lasting long uh, is a very simple uh, learn how to say no and when to say no okay uh, I'm an Indian uh, I think it's a very Indian thing to say uh, if if any favor or anything is asked of you to do you to say yes for everything uh, you know yes I can do this okay Roshan will you do this yeah yes yeah, I'll do this um, can you do this yes I'll do this I'm not thinking about I'm not thinking or oh, it's it's like it's almost as if that I've forgotten that there's only 24 hours in a day and and I need to sleep some of the hours but I don't know what it is about uh, us uh, it's very difficult for us Indians to say no uh, even maybe <laughs> or mm, to be very diplomatic we'll say I let I let you know I'll keep you posted uh, things like that but uh, but it is very important um, to, uh, to be able to say no you know especially if it's clashing with your priorities uh, are, are you with me yeah um, it's very important and uh, and it's and you would develop this culture this habit by saying uh, and and you know as you as you make certain priorities the people that you are leading will get to know okay he will not tell no unless he is really not able to do it he or she is really not able to do it so it'll come you know as there will come a point where your no will be valued and without being taken as offense. You like, oh, you know, I asked this person and he or she said no, I'm never going to ask this person types. Uh, that's the fear, right? Uh, that stops us from saying no, but then, uh, trust me guys, it's gonna, uh, you know, help you last long. <laughs> okay, uh, so plan your time or people will plan it for you. Okay, uh, just a book suggestion. Uh, it's mentioned in your notes. Uh, There's a book called Deep Work by Cal Newport. Um, you know, I'm sure most of you have already heard of it, or if not, already read that book. Um, even Pastor mentioned this book uh, recently in this, uh, when we were doing the series on mental health in the month of February, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, give that book a read it's a good one um, even book summaries are available on YouTube uh, for you to just go through it and whatnot okay um, so uh, basically this uh, what that book suggests uh, just one of the points is that um, if there's a work or an assignment that needs to be done uh, you set aside you know either one hour or how many whatever one hour two hour three hours and you shut everything off and you are only focused on that one thing and that you know working on that one thing for that many hours of you know time is considered as deep work um, and 
a lot of examples such as Bill Gates is used in that um, how they would you know and a lot of major successful entrepreneurs are mentioned in that book where they would just book a room or go to some solitude place and, uh, and just work on that one thing and uh, no wonder they are successful people but yeah it's a good read uh, you know take it out when you can and I had to learn to manage my time as well because when I joined APC, I joined as the youth pastor and also as the associate worship pastor. And so that means I had to deal with uh, the youth ministry. And just so you know, under youth ministry, we have the youth core team. I have to, um, I am uh, under the supervision of past, sen the senior pastor, uh, the core team, and I'm also leading the, the youth ministry and everything that's related with it right and then there's the worship ministry as well so there's worship ministry and then everything that's related with worship ministry uh, from the sound team and to interact uh, coordinating with the setup team um, and uh, equipping the worship leaders training the musicians working with them uh, walking walking with them understanding where they are in life and whatnot so there are all these things with youth ministry worship ministry and, and whatnot and it is very very easy for all these work to get mixed up and jumbled up and whatnot you know uh and it's happened sometimes but so the way i would approach uh, a day is uh you know i would just divide a, a day into two halves i tried to uh and it was successful for the most part okay it was successful guys um so the first half maybe I will only focus on youth ministry um, I would resist the temptation to think about work related to worship ministry and if and if something pops up about worship ministry I will park it I would make a note of it on a, whatever a sticky notes I will keep it aside uh, you know and then just focus on youth ministry uh, I, I was very determined to not waste uh, any time mental uh, you know strength on another area of ministry uh, which was not uh, important at that time okay um, and then the second half I would focus on everything related to worship ministry and um, yeah so it, it, yeah um, a, a, any other thoughts that you want to share on this a point of time management uh, as, as anything else that you've done that has been uh, helpful for you that you want to share Yes, uh, please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, thank, thank you, Pastor. I'm, I'm just going to uh, add to the point you made about learning to say no. Um, there was also a time in my own life where I was always agreeing to everything, and somebody made a comment that, oh, I'm going to ask him because he's always helping out. He never says no. Right. And so when I heard that, I realized that people just drop into my own schedule, not minding what I have on my own plate yeah. because they know I'll always say yes. So I, I yeah. started being firm on no, and I realized that people started adjusting yes. to ensure that whatever they're saying or trying to give me to do or help them to do, it's, you know, it's not going to disrupt anything in my schedule. So I do agree with you. It's important that we're firm to say, we can say it in a nice way, but let them just know that you also have yeah. your own things to do and you can't just come disrupting what they're doing. And I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Eh? Yeah. I think we've all been there, I guess. <laughs> uh, anybody else who wants to share anything from your experience on this point? Yes, Christopher, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, uh, I think sometimes uh, in, in time management there are these um, distractions that uh, that take place. Uh, it could be someone, uh, uh, you know, some event or even a person, uh, you know, distracting uh, us from uh, you know being able to concentrate and focus on a particular uh, uh, you know, time-bound uh, task. And uh, these distractions can be. Um, could be you know some of them could be important some of them could right. be you know valid yeah. there's some that are you know unnecessary and then you know we just sort of uh, get caught up in the destruction and uh, suddenly realize that you know a couple of yeah. hours have gone by so yeah, yeah. i just thought i'll show that yeah thank you 
thanks, Christopher. Uh, anyone else? Avni, is anything you've experienced? Yeah, recently, I went through this very recently this experience of saying no and uh, i was uh, too oppressed by some responsibility and i was finding it difficult to do so i just took a step and i said uh, yeah. uh, no and i don't know but it was a supernatural experience where i felt some heavy burden lifted out of my head and i was yeah. able to focus on my priority yeah. which, I had, which was actually coming uh, against me and uh, I realized that saying yes will not make people happy. Yeah. But saying no makes you accomplish much. And maybe you're not happy, or, but uh, yeah. people are not happy with your yes. yes. But they're happy when you say no, but um, you do what is uh, required and you fulfill that. Uh, and yeah. that, is, that satisfaction builds you up and encourages you to do better yeah. and yeah. give better outputs. So recently, I very recent, I was just um, smiling on myself when I was <laughs> listening to you. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, my husband said, you know, you always have a yes for everything. And yeah. <clears throat> I realized that yes was not making uh, much of a benefit uh, right. in everything. So I learned that. With like, sure. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. It really helps. Yeah. Thank you, Avni. Thank you for sharing. Thanks, Christopher. Thank you, Say. Yeah, just uh, another person. Anybody else wants to share from your experience before we move on? And what has helped you, uh, you know, in managing your time? If we can share that, also, it's good. Yes, Prabhakar. Go ahead. Very good morning, Pastor. Uh, actually, um, saying no is uh, sometimes very difficult. Uh, due to uh, people's expectation, especially when we are when we are uh, you know work or corporate jobs mm -hmm. kind of a thing, uh, when we possess certain positions, so people expect even our superiors or peers, uh, subordinates, many times they they expect us to say always yes. So it is always imbibed in corporate world or mm -hmm. in in worldly nature as well. People always come up. Uh, come to us uh, uh, with expectations, even in ministry. So uh, sometimes saying no is more difficult uh, because we we think a lot of uh, that what they think about us. But um, over the time, I realized that if every time we say yes to them, right. so they will take us for granted, okay. and we shouldn't let ourselves taken for granted at right. any cost. Right. So it should be in a professional way and also very politely we should say that uh, this time I'm so sorry, next time I'll do that or uh, now my priorities is different. So, so, right. so sorry for that, but I'll do it next time. That's my point. Right. Thank you for sharing that, Prabhupada. Thank you for being Thank honest. Yeah. yeah. Elisha, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Pastor. I think Ravaka shared a thoughts uh, on what I was also want to, wanting to share, I think uh, we shouldn't. Uh, we should also tread cautiously, not trying to make saying you no know, part of uh, our syllable, so that because we want to say no, yeah. this is yeah. ministry, yeah. and we are we are doing ministry um, largely for young people who yeah. needs attention, who needs care who needs our time and our efforts. Yeah. So even as much as we are trying to manage our own time, right. saying no at a time, we should always try to make time for another time. Maybe the person has come to you with a need. Right. If you can help the person now, try and speak to him or her and schedule him for another time so that uh, you can engage him. We, we shouldn't make uh, saying you no know, become part of us because people take us for granted. Right. For me, I believe that if we really want to do ministry and right. do to the uh, to the maximum, when we put take us for granted, uh, it is between them and God. Uh, we, we should go to the extent where 
we will feel that we have really sacrificed and right. poured out for the people we are right. ministering to. That is when we, we can be proud of uh, what God has used us to achieve in the life of these young people. Thank you very right. much. Thank you, Elisha. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I mean it's very it's important not to get confused between being able to serve people well and then not being able to manage your time well. I think there are two very different things, uh, especially when it comes to you know the administrative part of things. Uh, ministry is not just always uh, being available for people, which is true, uh, but then uh, I think there is an administrative side to ministry which not a lot of people like to talk about uh, or think that even exists or it, it even requires. So those, uh, you know, that part of ministry is very important, the way that you manage time. Um, yeah. But thank you for sharing, Elisha. Yeah. Um, so there's a question here. How to manage spiritual apathy amongst a youth, which comes due to, which comes to impatience? Uh, I don't see the actual name. Uh, may I know who this is, please? The name says Metro Stars, but I'm sure there's another name. Because I want you to elaborate on that question, if possible. Yeah, Kennedy, could you please elaborate your question? Okay, feel free to unmute and uh, speak. Am I audible? Um, there's an echo from your end, Kennedy. Yeah. I think it's a problem with my, from my side. But my, my question was, I think due to apathy, right. you tend to be impatient in this direction. So how do you manage that? Because due to impatience and poor time management, eh? right. I think they just lose interest and apathy tends to develop in the process. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the secret for any, the secret for life is balance in an ideal world, right? Um, and again, managing time does not say that I don't, it should not say that, you know, I don't have love for the people that you're serving. Uh, it's as simple as that. I, you know, don't want to elaborate more on that, but then, um, Again, just like what Elisha shared, is you don't get into this habit of saying no for the sake of saying no. You are saying no to prioritize uh, your other work. So, for example, at this moment, your priority is to minister to a young person who is in need of help. That is your priority. And then there's another, you know, say your colleague or someone comes and saying, okay, hey, can you work on this thing? Uh, report, I need this. Can you help me with that? What are you going to do? You are going to say no to this person who wants a report because you want to serve the young person who is in need. You understand what I'm saying, right? So you, you know, you learn to prioritize what is important and not to say no for the sake of saying no. Uh, you are saying no as a spiritual habit uh, and also as a good habit um, to get work done. And so that work could be anything in ministry, being being able to serve a person uh, or, or administrative work. Okay. Yeah, Prabhakar, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to add uh, to Kennedy's question, Pastor. Um, okay. Uh, to, uh, as you said, I completely agree with you. And sometimes what happens with young people, are mostly they are impatient, actually. And to deal with them, we have to have a lot of patience. Um, th there are many incidents happened recently with me. That, um, there was a, a sister, a young sister, who got married at very early age. And she has a son. And uh, uh, I don't know I don't know whether she was married uh, like on her own, uh, like love marriage or kind of arrangement. I don't know. But the, her husband is a drunkard. So he she he used to beat her a lot, and she didn't he started coming to church, and uh, she uh, like so I used to counsel them, I and my wife. You know, so she said she wanted my number, so I had exchanged the numbers, and she used to call me uh, daily, like to get prayer. 
uh, pray pray for me my health is not well and this and that so i used to pray a lot recently what happened she started uh, calling me at, at any it might be a midnight or it might be a late evening or morning like 5 a.m or so i told her when she came to church see sister this is not the way uh, we should communicate with each other we are praying for you daily and uh, if you don't believe that we are praying then there is no point of getting prayer daily so we are praying for you to work in your life and then we did counseling to her and now she has stopped calling at any, any random point of time she used to call at 2 a night in the, in the night 2 a.m or 3 a.m sometimes and sometimes some of the young people who used to uh, go through a lot of you know heartbreaks or breakups and this this kind of stuff uh, everything so they they want uh, things to be uh, sorted out at that right time and they even quoted the scripts like ask and it will be given so we we need to tell them the real meaning of that and doctrinal foundations and everything so that is what i want to invite that sometimes we have to be uh, very clear about our views we have to put boundaries aside us so that no one could cross that boundaries and even we shouldn't cross that yeah. boundaries so in that way we yeah. should tell them the clear message that this is the time of availability yeah. or this is not the time of availability so that's what yeah. my point is all about so showing apathy but uh yeah. within the discipline and within the limits yeah. and also we have to say uh, the right to say no and the right to say yes it should be uh, between us i mean between on us thank you pastor right yeah thank you Prabhakar. yeah thank you for sharing and being honest okay yeah so i think we all can kind of conclude that and management is important and saying no is important and how we say it is also important right so uh, first two points the challenges for youth leaders youth pastors in ministry is uh, impatience and time management and then uh, the third one uh, is which in my opinion is uh, a pretty big one is discouragement uh, okay, so maybe the single most powerful feeling that entices great women and men to exit prematurely from youth ministry is discouragement. Okay, um, it's like one day you're feeling like you're the best youth pastor, and the next day you're thinking, okay, if you're really having an impact, oh, is this what God wants you to do? You know, we have this Elijah moment, you know, one day you're slaughtering 400 prophets of Baal and the next day you're wondering what's happening in my life types. Okay, uh, again, and is, has anybody been there? Uh, right. Uh, so the nature, once again, is, a, you know, wherever people are involved, anywhere people, people are involved, the task becomes difficult. Okay, no matter where you are, you know what it is which which area of ministry you're leading people are involved the task becomes difficult because that's what we like to do we like to complicate things <laughs> right um it's never a smooth ride anywhere uh yeah especially in churches too okay uh i, I can hear a lot of amen so yeah uh but i mean there could be so many reasons uh, for a youth pastor or a youth leader to get discouraged uh, as one of the challenges, right? Uh, it could be, uh, I've just mentioned a few reasons, a few points in the notes, but then the list can go on. But uh, here it is, okay, uh, lack of respect. Uh, it could be from your leadership or from your core team members, you know, that could lead to discouragement. Sleep deprivation and because of a new baby. Uh, Okay, so I put that point in uh, a couple of years ago when Ethan was very young. I mean, when he was just about born. Okay, and so I was very sleep deprived. And that's when I just took up the role as a youth pastor. And it was not fun. Um, so that's where the point is there. So uh, sleep deprivation because of a new baby, uh, conflict and confrontation. Um, you know, a lot of conflicts, confrontation, people are involved you know happens uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding uh, too many calls and emails to return <laughs> um, criticism um, is like what you know you're not leading the youth well what's this you know you're not connecting with them 
blah 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 why did you have a barbecue party why did you take them to swimming pool you know they know what if they drown Ex examples okay uh, youth who are difficult to like uh, uh, core team not cooperating failure to please everyone failure to please anyone uh, when you receive an email of disappointment saying Roshan, I'm very disappointed with you, uh, you know, because you did not uh, follow up with this person, but so and so well, uh, you did the announcement lacked, uh, you know, we can do better and things like that. So, does anyone here relate to anything I've just said? <laughs> okay, yeah, Ch challenges are real, huh? <laughs> okay so yeah discouragement is real it can come in any a different shape <clears> or <throat> form uh and all of this is uh real uh very real but uh hang on there is hope for all of us right uh you know, as we know that we are running this race with endurance and perseverance. And one of the things that we need to remember is that Jesus is with us, right? He has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Uh, I mean, that's all the hope we need to hear right? when, we are, when we are going through this uh, race of in ministry is all we need to know is that the great I am is with us. The good shepherd is with us. Right? He walks with us in, through the valley, through the darkest valley. Uh, and so we need to fear no evil. Right? Psalm 23 it says, for he is with me and he comforts me. Right, through all the challenges, through all the discouragements, uh, through all the lack of respect and criticism and emails of disappointment and and whatnot, uh, through it all, he is with us. And that is a beautiful, beautiful hope. Right. So just some of the practical uh, steps to battle discouragement is to be confident and know, one, that you are not alone and Jesus is with you. And second thing, what has helped me personally is find yourself a mentor, right? Find yourself a mentor. Pray and seek and ask God uh, for the right person to be led into your life to help to mentor you and guide you. And um, some of the points that you can remember in finding a mentor while you're praying is you can ask yourself, uh, I mean, you can look people inside and outside of your church, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm more comfortable with finding a person outside of the church so that, you know, because there's no much of familiarity. Okay, I, that's my, in my opinion, you, you know, just do what you're comfortable with. Ask yourself who inspires you who encourages you, who confronts, corrects, and challenges you, and who do you respect? Okay, um, so find yourself a mentor, and uh, and and I'm sharing this because uh, during my time, uh, I mean, seasons of discouragement, uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there will be a lot more seasons of discouragement to come, but then uh, having a mentor has helped me. It's having someone to share with, say, you know, this is what happened, this is what's happening, uh, help me, right? help me. Uh, and and just having this individual to inspire me, to encourage me, to correct me. I think we all need people in our life uh, who is willing to correct you and confront you. And you should be able to receive correction. Okay, um, and we need to discern the difference between criticism, uh, receiving criticism, and receiving correction. They are two very different things. Okay, uh, I mean, you think about all these great athletes and sports person. Um, I'm sorry, I keep using examples of sports, but you know, say Roger Federer and uh, any coaches, right? All these great athletes have coaches, and what do they do? Is they correct their Right, and uh, they give tips on how they can get better. 
is isn't it and so if we want to thrive in ministry or to get better to grow better as an individual or as a person it is very important to be able to receive correction and to have a person that is willing to correct you and know that you will not be offended by that okay so once you find a mentor uh, you know respect the mentor's time if you're setting up a meeting with a mentor be on time you know and i have this philosophy uh, where I say, you are late if you're on time, you are on time when you're early. And so respect the mentor's time, uh, you know, and uh, have a hobby, uh, you know, uh, and take a good look at your calendar and see where you can make time for yourself, you know, to go for a walk by the lake or, you know, bird watching, whatever it is, you know, get a hobby uh, and make a personal commitment to last. Okay, make a personal commitment to last. Saying, I'm, you know, I'm committing to last. No matter what discouragement I face, uh, I'm going to, you know, make sure that I see through this. Okay, um, so that's the third challenge. And um, the fourth challenge is communication. Um, it, communication is important. Okay, world wars has happened because of miscommunication and open no communication. Okay, so it, all the great leaders uh, know that communication is not just saying something. It's not just passing along a verbal set of commands. It's not just, it's, it's not communication. Right? Communication is a skill, right? So you know where we learn to be clear in our communication so what you want to say and how you want to say it it's very very important right um so again in youth ministry we have two audiences uh two people that we are working with one is your team and your senior pastor and the other is the youth itself right communicating with your senior pastor keeping him updated in your weekly reports bi-weekly reports monthly reports quarterly reports saying okay this is what's happening this is what's going to happen uh, this is the plan the vision what are you saying you say letting him know what you're up with you know what what you're planning and whatnot okay and communicating the same thing to your team your core team members right so everybody's on the same page and that they are able to help you facilitate what you want to achieve as a youth leader okay so communication is uh, super important and uh, yeah find ways in how you can better get better in communication right get a book if there's a book that uh, that will help you with your you know improving your communication get better at it like i said communication is not just throwing uh, passing along a verbal set of commands it's more more than that okay and that's one of the sides to communication the other side is uh, how do you engage uh, you know communicate with your youth uh, right so you look at all the different channels pathways that are available for you to communicate with your youth and then you come and, and then you use them all and you use the appropriate one for example say newsletters emails website updates text messages social media uh you know instagram whatever there's so many right and communicate often okay uh communicate often uh Hey, Christopher, I'll, I'll get to you. I'll just make this point and I'll get to you. Okay, uh, one of the things that I want you to keep in mind is that there is no such thing as common sense when you're leading a team uh, or whatever, okay? It's because I say this because what may seem common sense to you will not seem as common sense to another person. And so that will lead to assumption. And because you assumed, and if because you're assuming that this person okay you know it's common sense to me and so it's going to be common sense to this person also and then you know when you finally finally realize that okay they, it, it hasn't occurred to them you are going to be upset and um, angry and irritated because you assumed that person knew about it so over communicate there is no such thing as common sense in amongst the you know when, when you're leading a bunch of people so over communicate there is no such thing as too much communication so communicate as often as possible and it's very important okay uh, and then finally uh, you know intimacy with God is key uh, you know the busier you get in ministry it is possible that your your your, your walk with God can get uh, hit 
by that because uh, again we can come up with valid and genuine reasons such as time uh, you know I'm not able to make time uh, for to spend time with him I'm not able to make time to pray with him I'm not able to make time to uh, read his word and whatnot okay but uh, our intimacy with God is our fuel uh, for the fire in ministry right? it, it, it fuels uh, our fire in ministry okay um, so these are the five challenges that a youth leader youth pastor can uh, face i will speak about the uh, the challenges that the youth face and the rest of the chapter in the next class when we meet but yeah christopher go ahead oh yes pastor actually this is in an earlier section which is in discouragement yes uh, where you mentioned about youth who are difficult to like so i just want to understand that uh, you know, could give us a couple of examples um, in your experience. I mean, just from a con in, a, in, a, in the context of of a youth of the youth ministry, right. and uh, also areas where possibly uh, you know boundaries have been crossed. So, mm -hmm. I just wanted to get uh, get a little bit of yeah, insight into that. Yeah, um, youth who are difficult to be liked. Again, that point is see most a lot of these points are again from my personal experience as a youth pastor and also as a youth. And so I was one of those youth who was very difficult to be liked because uh, uh, I think, I mean, I was just too hyper uh, to, um, I wanted to challenge everything that was said. Uh, and again, and not with ill intentions, that was one of the things I would say. Um, I would ask questions if i if i felt that something was not right you know as a youth i would ask questions so i mean there are a lot of young individuals who can be like that who is not willing to uh, understand uh, you know certain guidelines that you're trying to set and um, and what they will not seem to uh, understand is the difference between asking questions and questioning okay there is a very thin line and the difference between asking questions and questioning it all boils down to the motive and the intention of the heart. Um, and so that's one of the things. Uh, and uh, again, Christopher, they come in all different shapes and sizes in the way that uh, the, uh, the young people are, you know, were very difficult to like. I think that's just a point. But then, um, you know, you, uh, yeah, um, you just ask God for help and, and then, yeah, ask and say, help me like that person. That's one of the things. And uh, boundaries will always be crossed uh, again, uh, Christopher. So uh, a youth camp is a classic example where you experience and encounter all of this. Uh, you know, you set a guide, you set a certain guidelines saying, for example, OK, guys, nobody gets out of this campus gate uh, outside alone. Uh, because for the youth camp where we went, it just, we were surrounded by the forest. Elephants are there everywhere. and um, you know, we told them very clearly, very specifically, saying, "Okay, nobody is allowed to go out uh, without permission outside of the gate and after a certain time." And uh, people went out. <laughs> they crossed the literal boundaries, and they also crossed the boundaries that we set verbally. Um, and that's always going to happen. And uh, yeah, it, it's part of ministry, Christopher. And I, I've, I've. I have come to terms with agreeing, you know, that, okay, hey, people are not always going to listen to you. Uh, you know, things like this are going to happen, but I'm not going to let that ruin my day. Uh, you know, because of one person's, uh, you know, disobedience, I don't want the other hundred and a hundred people to get affected by the way I feel about this thing. So you meet with that individual uh, and you know, work on them, you speak with them and, uh, yeah. Awesome. All right, everyone, I hope you had a good time uh, learning. We'll meet again Wednesday, and we'll continue with this session. OK. Thank you for joining. You guys take care. I'll see you around. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor. God bless you.